Good morning, students. Uh, introduction to engineering today is going to be about the industrial revolutions. And I really believe that all of you have heard about this word, right? Industrial revolution. And now we, it looks like we are in the, the time of uh, industry for zero. Today we're gonna discuss about this and the basic idea that uh, about the industrial revolution and how it's happened. And this lecture is a kind of the uh, the second episode uh, from the first lecture. Uh, it's continuing from the uh, history of engineering, and last time we stopped at the and modern world, right? First of all, I need to introduce you uh, to this period of time. It's called Victorian in England. Why I need to mention this? Because uh, the first industrial revolution happened in England. And this, this photo showed Queen Victoria, who is the, this period of time named after her. Uh, and Victoria Inland last in the 18th to uh, 19th centuries. And this photo shows that many modern things has developed in that period of time. For example, we have the camera. We also have a uh, sewing machine and steamboat. This is one of the crucial thing that uh, effect to the world in that era, in, in that period of time. And also we have the typing machine, right? This is the personal typing machine. If you remember, last time I mentioned about the Johann Gutenberg who invented the, the printing. And after we have the first printing machine, we can print, print a Bible and that brings the world, the literacy, because, I'm sorry, who wrote on the screen, bring the world literacy, because uh, people in Europe in that period of time want to study Bible. And in order to study Bible, they need to have a good literacy. I mean, uh, they can read or write, and that bring the humanity, a lot of things. When I discuss about the Industrial Revolution, I need to mention about this gentleman. His name is James Watt. I think uh, everybody in this lecture know James Watt. James Watt, he is, he is a, a Scottish engineer who invented the steam engine on the left. Is, is the steam engine that James Watt invented and built. <coughs> but however, the industrial revolution is not happened on only the factor from the technological side, but also from the ec economical side as well. Are you, I would like to introduce you uh, this gentleman, his, his name is Adam Smith. Adam Smith is a professor uh, of philosophy and he's also a Scottish. And from his uh, idea, he changed the, the, the idea of uh, economics because in the past we call economic um, merchandise, but uh, from the idea of Adam Smith, it changed the, the merchandise, changed to the capitalism. I will explain you shortly. Capitalism means you in in Thai it's called to niyom. I think you 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 know about this word, right? To niyom, to to niyom or capitalism is the, the economic system uh, that we use in today. In the past, uh, people. Um, believe that 
resource is limit. One good example is like, if you have three person and you got a, a piece of pie, a piece of pie, and you can divide the, the pie into uh, 12 small pieces, right? So if you have three person, that means you're gonna get uh, four each, right? Four for each. What can, what can we do if you want to have more than four? If I want to have five, uh, what can I do? I need to take it from others, right? So that, that is the, the old idea of uh, taking the resources. So uh, people just try to make wars to conquer the, the land and people. This, this is the idea. But for uh, Adam Smith, uh, suggest that that is not a good idea. Actually, the wealth or resources can be produced, right? So, and how can we work in a more productive way than just make war and conquer the, the land? So, Adam Smith uh, give one example, which is a classical example. It's like this. If you ask a good uh, uh, a craftsman to produce a pin, when a craftsman want to produce a pin, that means he need to start from the beginning. For example, he need to uh, stretch a wire. Follow uh, this step: stretch the wire, uh, untie. Um, make a Y, set a Y, cut a Y, right? And sharpen the Y, and you can see it's divided into maybe nine tasks until packing and sell. This is the, the step of making a pin. But if you make it on your own, for one day you can produce just a couple of pins, right? Because the whole process takes time. However, if you divide it into the small tasks like this, like for example, in this figure is nine tasks, and you divide the tasks and find the people to do the specific tasks. Some people just making wire. Some people just stash wire and do it in series. Okay, just do it in series. Um, sorry. Please don't write on the screen. You, I think you can uh, write on your slide. Thank you. Okay, you, you can stress. You, you can find the people uh, to do the task, a specific task at each step, and in this way, it's more productive, right? And maybe in one day, you can produce uh, hundreds or thousands of pin. And as you can see here, uh, the, the times that Adam Smith suggests, the, this idea is in the 17th century, right? And if you count the time until today, it's more than 300 years. And if you consider the, the, this concept, you're gonna find this concept happen in factory, right? So the, uh, this process is called division of labor, and it's a very crucial step. Uh, and it's very crucial idea that make us make the the industry happen. I, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about the, the the word industry. Industry in English come from the two words. The the first one is in in it's, it's from n. It means progress or doing or enter. And industry is from work. From, from the, so industry means doing work in the uh, systematic way. But if you uh, translate industry into Thai, we call usahakam, right? Usahakam, usaha. What is the mean of usaha? We idea, right? Usaha, what is it? เหมือนแบบว่าต้องตั้งใจทำนะครับ
อุตสาหะออกแรงมีความพยายามอุตสาหะกับกรรมก็คือการกระทำส่วนอุตสาหกรรมก็คือการกระทำที่ใช้ความตรับตำแรงงานอะไรอย่างนี้นะครับ If you compare the meaning from uh, English to Thai between these two languages, it is look like it's not fit together. So industries means again uh, working in the systematic way, and this figure show us the idea of working in industry. Okay, the the idea of Adam Smith is is. Uh, Uh, he wrote a book to collect this idea, and I really uh, encourage you all to find some chances to read it. The, this book is called "The A Wealth of Nations." The The Wealth of Nations. You can find it on the internet, and I strongly suggest you to have a look in this YouTube video, and you're gonna find the. It maybe it's, it's definitely good, more good explanation about this concept. This is another example, and why the industrial revolution happened. As you can see on the left, this is a cloth, right? You can think about the division of labor. If you want to produce clothes like this, you need to you need to have The farmer, right? Farmer uh, produce cheap, and you can have the fur washer. You can have fur antangel, right? This one is a process to try to clean and try to uh, spun the the fur, and you dye the fur and make it a cloth. Make it the the material for Uh, doing this clothes, right? But it's not only that. Once you produce clothes, you need to sell it, and there are many more people involved. You have a cheap seller because you want to to trade it, you want to sell it uh, globally, you want to transfer it to the different part of the world, right? You have seller, and when you want to sell, you to have cheap. You also have a captain. You you also have the many more thing because they, in the ship you use a lot of rope, and you need to have a rope producer. You need to have merchandise. You have to have merchants to carry the the goods to different part of the world. And as you can see here, there are many people need to involve in this work. Just only a, this simple example, and it's not only that. If you consider about the tools that we use in the different processes, it's again we need to involve with, for example, the the smith, right? Try to uh, the the miner, the miner find the the material and smith to produce tools and. And you you can imagine about that many things happen once again and again, right? And by this concept, the industrial revolution happened. And in this photo, shows the the industry in the first industrial revolution, as you can see here, and the. This is the the machines, right? And the machine is uh, obtain the power from uh, steam engine. <laughs> steam engine actually installed outside this building on the back of this wall, and you might see this. One. You might notice that there is a one running shaft over here, right? And this is called the the power shaft. And the power shaft is connected to the pulley above this picture, and the pulley transfer the power by using belt, and the machine is running. Okay. However, in the first industrial revolution, 
is uh, the, the main objective of using the machine in the first industrial revolution is to replace the manpower, right? As the description over here, the first industrial revolution through the introduction of mechanical production facilities. So it's, it's mainly about the, the mechanical power with help of water and steam power. And this figure below here is the figure of the, uh, how it's called? It's called, um, I forgot the, the English word. Okay. And next, we're going to talk about the second industrial revolution. And after the first industrial revolution happened in England, and economic in the England is growth. Uh, industrial revolution is not only have the, the good side, but it has the bad side as well. If you interested in this topic, um, please find a book about industrial revolution and you're gonna find that um, there is a lot of problem happen. Actually, it's like what happened in, in Thailand in, in one period of time, we, there has also the, the problem about the child, uh, ch child children labor. They use the uh, women and children in the industry because the women and children uh, need to uh, request the, the low wages. Right? I mean, they, they have the low cost of the labor. And after that, and the second industrial revolution happened in the USA because the, after the European people, uh, many, many of the European people moved to the USA, they start to, uh, they start the new, new country, right? How, although they are under the, the UK uh, government, but uh, they start the new country and There, there are many uh, scientists and engineers uh, moved to the, the US. And one man who is, uh, sorry, I, I don't see the name very well. His name is Bomer. His name is Bomer. Um, Bomer invents the method to produce iron. Actually, in the U.S., has, there has the a lot of um, uh, resources, and Boomer uh, try has invented the way that we can extract iron. So, there are a lot of uh, good iron and material has produced. It's not only about the iron, but Edwin Drake also find the petroleum and what we call the diesel and benzene today, right? And after he find the, the petroleum and we can use the petroleum as a new source of the energy because in, in the first industrial revolution, they used uh, coal. In England, it has a lot of coal, but in the US, they, they also has a lot of the, the petroleum. And you need to know this guy. Uh, his name is Otto. Otto is the a, a scientist who invented the the Otto cycle, and the Otto cycle bring us later the internal combustion engine. So in this period of time, it's not just only the 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 engine. They also have the uh, Edison, Thomas Alva Edison, and uh, Nikola Tesla. And development about the electric, uh, electrical engineering make us 
to have the uh, the motor electric motor and you can use the electric motor to produce many products because using of the electricity and the ICE that's mean um, the new kind of industry happen and you might can notice that we have the Harrison Ford in that period of time and we produce a lot of the the cars right? ICE is, is the new way of using energy and if you compare the size of the internal combustion engine to the external combustion engine which is the steam engine that James Watt invented this the ICE or internal combustion engine has a much smaller size so it can be installed and it's more it has a lot of a mobility right this list gives you the, the name of the uh, the scientists and uh, engineers the first one I need to mention is the Andrea Male Ampere and the Michael Faraday these two people uh, uh, dedicate their work on the electromagnetic and Henryson, uh, Henry Ford um, built and sell automobiles and mass produced and mass production emerges in that period of time right Thomas Edison and he did this is a, a good inventor he produced the, the electric bulb right and Nikola Tesla also proposed the alternating current machine and this brings us to the second industrial revolution I, I have some small photo here anyone can guess uh, the meaning of this photo No, no idea. No idea. Okay, thank you. Jula Lak, hap. Mày do see. No idea. Mày gặp Mày khuất lại là. KP, hả bạn? Anh nói KP sẽ đi pháp hả bạn? ไม่ใช่เทพีเสรีภาพไม่ใช่ไม่ใช่คือเหมือนงานที่มันเหมือนงานที่มันแขวนสัตว์อะไรไว้สักอย่างอ่าใช่ใช่ครับโรดี้
Uh, we start the in first industrial revolution in the year around 1980 to 1990. Oh, sorry, 1780 to 1790. It's between this year. And it lasts about 100 years. And again, the second one also lasts about 100 years. But for the third one, it's shorter. And we are now today. It's, we have we are in the year 2020. I'll discuss about this later. And this is a good example. You can see, you can the, notice the progress of the of the car, right? In, at this stage, they installed the, the top part of the car already. But the, it's falling by the ones that missing some parts. And after that, we come to the 20th century. The great scientist in this the century is the Albert Einstein. Again, the, the trend of using energy is changed. It's changed from the mechanical to electrical. And when we come into the second uh, 20th century, we, uh, we start using the nuclear energy. The third one, John Barton, uh, Walter Barton, and William Shockley. These three uh, scientists work at Bell Labs, and they invent the semiconductor device. So you know semiconductor device, right? Which is a diode and transistor. When we in when the uh, these three invent the transistor or semiconductors. That means the world starts to enter into the digital and computer era. Texas Instruments, I think you know this company. Uh, the, this company very good in producing the, the calculator, right? But actually the main business is uh, to produce the uh, digital uh, semiconductor chip Far Chai as well. And the aviation industry also growing. Boeing Airplane Company uh, develops the Boeing 707 capable to transporting 180 passengers at speed of 600 miles per hour. And this is us, uh, these figures show what happened in the 20th century because we um, we have the pro the big progression in science so we can produce the, the plane right we have the nuclear power plant and George Washington bridge this is also the engineering landmark in the past we cannot build the the bridge, which has the, the huge span like this, and the, the computer chip. This is the progression of the technology. From 1925, we start with the computer without the screen. The computer in the first uh, time, they intend to use <laughs> as the calculator. And after 30 years, we have MacBook, we have the window machine, we have laptop. It, this is a, in uh, 2009. We have uh, used Windows 7 and we start having a laptop. La laptop is the, uh, much more popular than the, in the past because the, the price is lower keeping lower and lower. Because of the development in the computer, the, in the engineering, we changed a lot. In the past, we used pens and paper to create drawing. And in just, it's less than 30 years, we changed from the paper and doing all things on the computer. 
in this photo shows a three-dimensional cat modeling of a building. As you can see here, you can have a detail of stairs and uh, columns and platform, whatever. We also do the engineering calculation like a computational fluid dynamics on the computer. In the past, there's no way to do this on your machine. I mean, the, uh, by using the home computer, by using the laptop. But right now, we, we are able to um, do the, the calculation on your machine. On the laptop, on, on the PC, you can do it at home. This is the evolution of the electronics. We have the, the first uh, single chip microcontroller that widely used for the calculator in the 1971. The name of the chip is called uh, 4004. At that time, the technology of the computer chip is is counting based on the number of transistors. At that time, it's less than 100 uh, million transistors, right? And when the time passed by, the number of transistors can be fit into the chip is increased exponentially. This is in according to Moore's law. Moore is the uh, founder of Intel's company. And up until now, we have more than uh, 1,000 million uh, transistors in a ship. And you can imagine about the progression. This is a tree guide, as I mentioned earlier. The, uh, here, this is a development of the uh, household and electronic device. We have a, the uh, transistor radio in around 1930. And we start to have the black and white television in 1968. The development in, in the first, <clears throat> in the first progression is a little bit uh, have some distance, right? It take about 30 years to start from, to, to go from the radio to television. But after that, in more or less period of time, we go from the television to the mobile phone, to the digital camera, and to the uh, iPad, iPod and LCD screen. So again, the progression of the development is grows uh, exponentially. It's not only about the uh, electronics device, but also the internet technology as well. We start to have the internet at the first time in 1960. And I would say in 1980 or 1990, around here, this 1989, Tim Berners-Lee, he's the, the one who proposed internet. In the past, it's not the fully internet. It's the network. It's a global network. I, I would say that it's a global network. But the... After the war, World War II, uh, people start to commercialize the internet. And we, the, the web page that we used until today start from around 1990. And the application is developed from the, at that time. And until now we have the mobile website. We use the, the internet from our mobile phone. Again, the development is very quick, right? Start from 1960 and up until now, it's just uh, 60 years 
and everything totally changed. Robot is another thing. Actually, the history of robotics uh, can be traced back into the, the uh, Renaissance era. The Da Vinci sketched the, the robot, robotic, the idea of the robot at that time. And if you remember, if you can remember, uh, the, we have the automaton, right? The, it's the kind of clockwork, Kailan. And we produce the mechanical thing by using the concept of the cam and the the spring, the, the coil spring. But however, this take a lot of time, long a long period of time from the the idea of the robot up until uh, two thousand year two thousand, we start to create a real robot. I'm not sure if you know the Ivo, Sony, uh, Sony's robot. This is a robotic box, uh, sorry, robotic dog, and you can play with it. Another famous robot is produced by Honda. Right? The name is the Asimo. I think you know that one. Right? But today, um, I, I would say the intelligence of robots that a humanity uh, produced is less than in the past because in the year 2000, around year 2000, we have the very clever robot. Asimo can walk on, uh, on the foot. But today we focus on building robots that can be used as a household device, like the vacuum cleaner robot or something like this. But in terms of technology, we go. Of, we, it's obvious we go further, much further than the year two thousand. But I mean, the, the products that related to the robot is um, in the in the different point of view. It's easier to access. There's not many people want to spend money on the robotic dog, right? But people happy to pay to the uh, to pay for the vacuum cleaner robot. And all of that brings us to the third industrial revolution because we have the advance in the electronics and IT system. So the IT system and computer are embedded into the, uh, into the, the industry. I marked this red color here, because the, during the year uh, 19, 19, 10, 20, 1940 to 1945, there is a one important event. Anyone know that? Anyone know what happened in the period of uh, 1940, 1940 to 1945? During the year 1940 to 1945, uh, there is the Great War. There was the Great War. It's World War II. And in World War II, uh, make the industry stop. However, the, the technology is not stopped from the development because the, the technology from the mili military is very advanced, right? And that, that is, I think that is one, one reason that make uh, this, this, the period of the second industrial revolution a little bit longer than the first industrial revolution, right? In the third industrial revolution, it's not only about the, the technology, but it's about the politics. I need to, I, I would like to mention about this a little bit. Uh, and the first industrial revolution happened in England. The second revolution in the, uh, happened in the, the US, right? And I would say the third industrial revolution happened in Asia. 
specifically on the Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific is the country that uh, covered the, the Pacific coast. For example, Japan, uh, Taiwan, and South Korea. Well, actually, it's, it's the whole Korea, but uh, only the South Korea adopt the concept of capitalism. Let's have a look about the Industrial Revolution in Japan. Actually, the Industrial Revolution in Japan start from the 19th century. It can be traced back uh, before the Second World War. The Second World War is the 1940. And at that period of time, um, Japanese government start to contact with the Western countries and bring a lot of the uh, Western concept into the country. You, you can watch the movie uh, Last Samurai and you can, you're gonna catch up with the, the event that happened in that period of time. Right? And it's called Meiji, Industrial Revolution. And if you go to visit, you have some chance to visit the Japan. You, you can go to this site and maybe you can find it interesting. I don't know. But however, uh, the, the symbol of being the industrialized country means you need to uh, gain some material from your country. As you can see here, we have, uh, in, Japan, in Japan, it has the steelwork, right? It has the, the finance, is finance try to uh, make the iron, right? All of this also still exit and have, they have a coal railway, something like this. You, you can feel about the, the heavy industry, get the energy, try to transform the material into the product. <coughs> and after the war, Japan also uh, get a, a huge effect from the war, right? Because uh, after the, the World War II end, the Japan is bombarded by the bomb and the whole country was destroyed. But however, because of the, the background as the industrialized uh, country, they recover very quickly and they focus on producing the household products and electronic products. If you have, again, if you have a chance to visit Tokyo, there is one museum and I would suggest you to go to, to pay visit. And it's called Edo Museum or something, I, I don't remember. And if you go to that museum, you're gonna find the history of, of Japan. It's worth to visit, I, I really suggest. And you're gonna see the, the invention of Japanese people it's, it's very impressive. If you have a chance to watch a movie, I would suggest you to watch the Back, Back to the Future. And because the Japan, Japan in that period of time just starting to produce the, the electronics thing. So it, it's also uh, happened in that movie uh, Back to the Future is about a professor who builds the uh, time machine, right? And in one part of the movie, the time machine is broken and they try to fix it. And the time machine has the, a component which is the, the transistor. And the professor just uh, bring out the broken transistor and said, oh, this is not good because this is in, made in Japan. And yeah, in, in that period of time might be sound funny, but nowadays Japan is the one of the great country to build the electronics components, right? And it's called 
Japanese economic miracle because of the the quick recovery after the World War II. Taiwan also industrialized already uh, many years ago. And um, I bring this photo to you because uh, I'm myself very familiar with this brand, Highwind. In the past, I mean about 10, 15 years, once I, I was the uh, undergrad student, I used to know this, uh, this brand. It's come, uh, it's selling the uh, mechanical components for automation, for example, linear, uh, linear guide, linear guideway, the linear bearing or something like that. But it's very surprised for me because um, today they start building the, the robot. Right. However, the development of the, the Taiwan into the industrialized country is also interesting. The political factor of Taiwan to industrialize their country is from the <coughs> the uh, division itself from mainland China, right? Mainland China and Taiwan uh, has the conflict about the, the political point of view. Mainland China adopt the communism, right? But <coughs> in Taiwan, they want to adopt the capitalism. So it's a, it's a huge conflict. And if you, uh, Feel if you are interested in this topic, you can find many contents on the YouTube that discuss about the political point of view between Taiwan and China. And because of the conflict, Taiwan need to jump into the uh, to be the leading of the industrial world, and this is the the main main factor. Another country that I need to uh, mention is the South Korea. South, South Korea is also an uh, industrialized country. In, in the time that I was a student, I mean the primary school student, South Korea is following us, I would say this. They has a big uh, political issue in their country the fight in, in the in the parliament that, that I I saw that picture very often on the television. However, <coughs> South Korea used more or less the same strategy like the Japan and uh, Taiwan used to develop their country. And you know, I think you know the conflict about the South Korea and North Korea, right? Because uh, South Korea and North Korea is kind of uh, divided country that is the, the effect from the World War II. The, the North Korea adopt the communism and South Korea adopt the uh, capitalism. And South Korea has uh, obtained the the supporting from the US and they are very good in producing the big chip. Hyundai and LG is two, uh, are two company, two big company in this country. On the right shows the economic growth comparing between the North Korea and South Korea. You can uh, you can imagine that the growth of the economy in the country that adopt the capitalism should be much higher than the country that adopt the communism. This, this year is LG Electronics founded, Hyundai Motor founded, and have a democratic reform. I have the first, I would say this is the period of time that they have first election, natural election in the country. Right. And you can see the graph. Uh, this figure show two words, right? On the left is Christ, Christ 
and on the right is Hupo. Kais is a government uh, is a government research body. It's like in our country we have uh, we have Sawata Cha, we have uh Nectek, Electronic. I have some friend came from Kais and we discuss a lot about this uh, the, the activity the activity of this unit, this research unit. And what I have heard is that in Kais behind more than one thousand more than thousand uh, PhD researcher, they give a lot of the scholarship to their people. And my friends are one of the people who got the scholarship. And the way they keep scholarship a little bit different from our country, because it's kind of an open opportunity. Anyone who has potential to study PhD just got the scholarship and study in the Europe, in America. And once they're finished, they have option to come back to work with a well-paid job as the government staff. And my friend is a different case because once they finish their work, the positions, there is no vacancy position in Kais, so they are open. And two of my friends just go out from the South Korea and work in the US and later came to the to the UK. And I mentioned about this because that because of this strategy, it's make the South Korea um, industrialize their country very quickly. Because they don't limit they, they don't have the limit uh resource a uh, human resource. Hyundai uh, make a big chip and you can see this, right? This is a big chip. And Hyundai uh, became maybe the first, uh, sorry, the, the second or the third uh, country in the world that very good in producing mega chip. And of, it's obvious and this, uh, the, the chip building technology of South Korea's transfer from the US is a kind of the supporting each other in the political point of view. Uh, the US need South Korea to, to be their uh, alliance in the Asia Pacific area. And in terms of the technology, they transfer the technology to South Korea. And today they, they are competitor in the business. China also uh, one, one, one country that adopt the, the industrial. Actually, I, I mentioned earlier that China adopt the uh, communism, right? But uh, it, it seems not to be working. China uh, announced the Great Leap Forward very forward in Thai, this can be translated into Anayobai Kayeng Kao Kadot. They want to transform their country from the uh, agricultural country into the industrial country. But due to the, the idea of communism, they want to make the industrial, they want to make industry in China as based on the idea of communism. Communism uh, is a kind of uh, working together. In Thai, we have a specific word from this for this situation. It's called Gong Thap Mot, a small unit and work on their own and produce uh, a small production. And once you gather together the small production, you're going to get the, the huge production value. And on the left, showing the, the finance for iron industry. They make iron out of this finance, small finance. 
and you can find the small finance all over the country and all over the farm. Right? This is farmer and the government try to uh, uh, encourage farmer to do farming in the same time with uh, the, the iron. And on the right, you can see here, this is the, the people gather together to produce iron. However, it's just, I would say, unfortunately, it didn't work because iron production is the high scale production. You cannot produce iron with the good quality from the small scale uh, process like this. And China uh, realized that it came in the wrong direction. And after that, they changed their mind and try to follow the same way as Japan did, right? Nowadays, China is one of the uh, industrial country. And also, if you consider about the economic system that China adopt, it's, it's not the communism anymore. It's changed from the communism into the uh, capitalism already. Yeah, this is a story. And right now, if we, we uh, combine the technology and the way that we produce uh, goods, this figure is, is the best presentation of the world in the industry, in, in the third industrial revolution. As you can see here, the, there are no engineers, no technician in the production line, only the robot. However, all of the robots are connected and commanded by using offline computer. What will happen in 21st century? In the 21st century, we are very uh, in the intense period of time in development of the AI, right? This is the, the figure that depicts the uh, artificial intelligence. And we also have a very good <coughs> manufacturing about the robot. And once, if you make this robot uh, clever as much as a human, you might get something like this. Right. You know this scene, right? This scene from what movie? Have you ever watched it? The iRobot. If you never watch it, I, I would suggest you to watch it. And we come to the fourth industrial revolution. And we are now in the year 2020 over here, right? You, oh, before I uh, talk about the fourth industrial revolution, I would like to go back a little bit. The third, the, the summary of the third industrial revolution is about to use the electronic and IT system that furthermore automate production, right? We uh, have a division, well division of labor and mass production. We have the IT and we try to replace the labor with the IT system and automate it. And when we come to the first industrial revolution, <coughs> We try to uh, replace the human again, but in a different level. I would like to go back a little bit again. In the first industrial revolution, human produce machine to replace a human work in the meaning of muscular power. You know what I mean? Try to uh, have the better power source because uh, in the past, we used animal power and human power to drive the industry, to, to drive the work. But in the first industrial revolution, we produce uh, the human, um, create machine and try to replace the muscular, muscular power. And the second, we still on the same concept as the first one, uh, replace the human muscular power, but we change a different kind of power source 
from the steam engine, from the mechanical power into the electrical power. And we have the well uh, division of labor concept. And these two ideas also transform into the third industrial revolution. The division of labor concept is much more better than in the past. We have the strong uh, definition and have much better uh, way to devise the tasks. And we use the IT and automation and come to here. Right. However, in the third industrial revolution, we still require human because making decision require human. We haven't uh, leave the machine to make decision for us. If you go to the uh, the, the factory, right, they the way that you can control the inventory, alai tang inventory, is still rely on human. However, we have the automation IT system to alarm, to warning us that uh, our inventory is low, and you need to uh, contact the seller, the, the the supplier, asking for the the material, something like that. But when we go to the first, the, to the fourth industrial revolution, AI is going to replace the decision making, which was the task of the human. And we call this through the use of cyber physical system. Cyber means the, the IT system is the abstract thing. And physical system is a concrete thing. You can touch, you can uh, is, it have the, the, the touchable thing. For example, robot, robot, robot arms. The robot arm itself construct from mortar and metal. This is the physical thing and we call it concrete thing. But the cyber thing is the electronics device and the way that and this robot can communicate with the different kind of device. We can communicate this robot to our mobile phone, the PC, laptop. This is some examples. <clears throat> this slide show the summary. The first and the second uh, industrial revolution, we use the machine to replace the muscular power. For the third one, we replace the human in the different level. It's called subconsciousness level. Because why, why is subconsciousness? Because the well-defined task require no learning, right? I think you, you know this, you, you can uh, think about this. For example, if I ask you to write to write you can write it using your experience using your trained skill right without any thinking you just write and this is called the well-defined task if you have the well-defined task that means you don't require any learning skill anymore you just program it into robot and robot also can write for you, right? But however, if you don't want it to, to be programmed, you need to, uh, you need to make it, I mean, you need to make the robot to have the ability for, to learning, right? And the ability to learning is called intelligence. In the industry of 4.0, we focus on the intelligence of the machine. And as is mentioned here, it's today intelligence production. So they need to have the learning system. Okay, that is the, the in industrial revolution, all of the four industrial revolution story. Any questions about that? <coughs>
This is a question. What about Thailand? Why is Thailand 4.0? Why is Thailand 4.0? And how does the Thailand 4.0 connect it to the industry 4.0? How do they relate to each other? Anyway, in our country also, there are, there are also some group of people try to uh, create a story to link Thailand 4.0 back into the past, but uh, if we compare our timeline and Thailand 4.0 or whatever to the world story, actually, I would say, <coughs> from my opinion, um, I don't think Thailand is now industrialized country. We don't pass the phase of uh, invention. We haven't had that yet. We don't have our uh, our own production, right? We are we are one of the industry industrial country by means of the production. We adopt the the way that we how it's called. We we adopt the way that uh, the other country industrialized or other industrialized country work. For example, when we start to uh, we start the to to make the of one product. I, I, I cannot say it's, it's one product. It, it's not our product. Or it's not the product of our own. Right? It's the product of our neighbor. Japan, Japan invest in our country and they hire our people to work on their way. Anyway, at the end, the product is still Japanese product, right? It's not Thai product. It's a kind of the, the labor, it's rather labor than we industrialize our country. But the, the, the thing is, I, I might not I, I forgot to mention one thing. Every time that has the industrial revolution, it's not only about the technology, but the, the way of living change. Right? In the past, uh, people living in the agricultural and economy right? is based on doing do farming. But once we have the industrialized uh, industrial revolution, people moving from the farming agricultural uh, into the factory. So the way of living change and it changed over time. It's from, from the first to the second is changing again and the second to the third is changing again. And now it's going to change again to the fourth industrial revolution. So we have a word it's called disruption, right? Disruption, this is not the first time that disruption happened. It's changed from time to time. It's happened from time to time. In Thailand, uh, in the past, we also uh, living in the agricultural economic system. And when we adopt the industry from the different country, from, from the US, from the Japan. The, the way of living of people changed as well. People from the, uh, from the countryside move into the city, move into the, uh, the industrial park, right? Everything also changed. So, I don't have a specific answer to this question. What is Thailand 4.0? I would leave you to study further about this and find the definition for your own, right? And the good way of studying about this question is try to discuss. And although the definition of Thailand 4.0 is not quite 
according to the industrial 4.0. But anyway, this bring us the Yutasat Hang Chat p right? I would suggest you to scan this QR code and uh, read it a little bit because in the past six or seven years, we invent uh, a huge amount of money to get this out. อีกยี่สิบปีข้างหน้าประเทศไทยจะเป็นอย่างไรนะครับยุทธศาสตร์ชาติยี่สิบปีนะครับมั่นคงมั่งคั่งยั่งยืนนะครับไอ้ suggest you all to study it and live it live with it okay this is all of the lecture today uh, any questions We don't have homework for this week. Ready, Kap? No question, yes. No question, Kap. Kap, Kap, Kap. Ha, me, we'll have a copy on the Kap. Any. Okay, Kap. And time, maybe, come time, go. หรือหัวข้ออะไรที่แบบว่าอยากคุยอยากชวนคุยก็วันนี้ผมขอจบเลคเชอร์ไว้เท่านี้นะครับนี้เดี๋ยวแป๊บนึงนะครับ